What's up, guys? Neil Orr with you to talk about this weekend so rare NBA slate. It is starting tonight on Thursday. We get a little extended weekend slate here. Usually it starts on Friday, but with the All-Star break, of course, the NBA returning on Thursday made sense to just extend the slate one extra day. So we get a little bit of a long one here. While you're coming in, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification button so you can get alerts when our shows go live. Stochastic is excited to be an authorized partner of So Rare and one of the first places you will find a bonus offer for So Rare NBA. Sign up for a new So Rare NBA account using our link, and you'll get one free limited card after completing your first five card purchases on the primary market. Limited cards are typically purchased in the marketplace or won as rewards for high placement in tournaments and help unlock the ability to participate in different tournaments. Getting a free limited card is a massive perk for signing up. The limited cards are one of 5,000 and tracked on the Ethereum blockchain, so you'll always know exactly how many cards are in circulation. In addition to getting a free limited card by signing up through Stochastic, you can also find great so rare projections on Stochastic. That's what I want to talk about in this video. I'm going to uh, show you my plan, show you these so rare projections at Stochastic and how I'm going to approach this slate. I've actually had a lot of success uh, using the Stochastic projections. I have, honestly, it's, it hasn't been nearly as thoughtful as I am with my uh, DFS and other types of competitions. I'm just straight up using the so rare projections on Stochastic to pick out some nice lineups and I've cashed in maybe all of them or all, all except for one. I had one weekend where I signed up literally at the last minute and I was doing a live show at the time. So didn't have as much success with that one, but I've had a lot of success uh, in several of these weeks just using the stochastic projections. I, I don't have a uh, prize to collect here because I already collected my one from uh, the last time I did a competition. I won a uh, Nasir Little rare card. So that was kind of exciting to get my third rare card. Kind of my plan has been, I'm only playing the limited cards i've only been paying for the limited cards to play in those contests and then i'll start playing the rare contest once i have enough cards to enter those i've won three so far with the desmond bain terrence mann and then the nasir little so you know not the best cards in the world i'm probably not going to be competitive right away when i when i get into those competitions unless i win one of these spots that gets me a tier one rare card but uh you know having a desmond bain helps a little bit i can hope for the best once i start racking up some of those rare cards but for now just mostly playing these uh limited competitions and then sometimes i'll play the uh common ones as well just because i've already got those cards uh but yeah i've had a lot of success in using these stochastic projections in these limited competitions uh, and i'll give you a, just a general idea of how i've been doing it of course you know i've been been buying some of the cards so it's you know you've got to invest a little bit but honestly it's not a huge investment up front to have some of these you know best players like really the only expensive limited cards are the kind of superstar those tier one cards and you can see here if you look at the last seven sales i mean a luca so that's going to run you 325 bucks but then straight down from there it's a you know hundred dollar drop off to the Giannis Jokic, and you can get a lot of these kind of stud players so that's kind of been my approach is just like load up on a few stud players and then from there you can fill in with you know it costs like 15 20 bucks to fill in with some of the uh great values each week so um it's pretty it's not really uh cost prohibitive to uh, play some of these great lineups using these stochastic projections. So this week, you know, I, I usually start by looking at some of the top projected plays um, just because, you know, you've got the MVP spot on so rare where which uh, your the, the last 10 average doesn't count against you. So you really just want to be playing, you know, some of these top projected plays, one of these top projected plays, at least uh, in that MVP spot, because again, the last 10 average, which if you're not familiar with so rare, the last 10 average is essentially the salary um, in the competitions that I play. And I'll, I guess I'll show you right now. So if you go to upcoming, the limited champion, this is the, the competition that I play uh, frequently has a cap of 120. That's kind of like the salary cap. Uh, and but what it is is they don't have rather than giving players salaries, they are the, the 120 cap is just the player's last 10 average, which you can see on the player cards that'll show you what their last 10 average is, and that's essentially their salary for the upcoming competition. Uh, so because in the competition that I play, the limited champion, you get to you choose five players, and whoever of your players has the top last 10 average just goes into your MVP spot, and they actually don't count against your 120 cap. So 
you know, knowing that you just start by plugging in a stud right away. You don't have to worry about their last 10 average. You just have to worry about their projection. So uh, that has been my approach is right away, just plugging in one of these studs. And then from there, I'm more concerned about value. Of course, you, you still want to be playing players who project really well, um, but you're trying to stay then under the 120 cap with your four remaining players. So for me this week, I'm actually, uh, I didn't go out and purchase any of the studs. I think I already had both a Luca and uh, an Anthony Davis. So um, I, I figured I can just start with there rather than I could have paid up and bought a Jokic, um, but I decided not to make that investment just because I already had two pretty great cards to start out with. So I'm using uh, Luca in that MVP spot, and then I think I'm going to use Anthony Davis. But really, I would say just in general, if you start out with any of these top, you know, 10 players or so, uh, play a couple of them in your lineups, I think you're off to a great start. Like you just, I play a very stars and scrubsy approach, which requires having a couple of these studs. So that's going to be my approach. I'm playing my, my Luca and my Anthony Davis because I've already got those cards. Uh, I went out and bought a Jakob Pertl, um, because so then from there, the second thing I look at is the value. And again, if, it, if you haven't watched these videos before, I talked to Alex, uh, the projection here is based on the player's top projection in the period. So like Jokic here has three games in this period. This is his projection for his top game in that period. You only get credit for whichever game is the player's top game. So uh, pretty useful to have projections for multiple games and to be able to see what the top projection is for each player. Uh, but so from there, I start with, you know, a couple studs and then I usually just go straight for looking at the value. Uh, so looking at some of the top values today, I actually already have a Talon Horton Tucker. So that was pretty useful to already have uh, one of the best values on the board. As I said, I already had Luca and Anthony Davis. I, uh, then I think I actually went out, I might've bought a Devin Booker. I don't actually remember which, which cards I have, but I'm playing players from among these. I'm just trying to fit under that 120 salary cap using players who are among our top projected plays on the slate. So I think I, I went out and bought uh Josh Christopher in part because they're just super cheap and, you know, it's pretty great value. So I'll probably play that. Um, and then Jakob Pertl, another, you know, great value here, but in general, that, that's my approach is just start by looking at projections, fill in two of the top projected plays on the site. Obviously, it helps with like Anthony Davis here. You can see he's projects great, but he's also a great value here. One of our top value plays on the day. Same with Luca, although that doesn't matter because he's in the MVP spot. Uh, but typically, if you can find a great value who also projects really well, that's a great player to have in one of your top two spots. And then from there, yeah, just filling in with some value. So uh, I think I'm going to be playing. I might not have even been factored in this THT, to be honest. I think I have the uh, the Anthony Davis, the Luca, and then I was thinking about playing a Devin Booker along with Jakob Pertl, and then one of the cheap guys, like either a Matisse Teibel or a Josh Christopher. I believe those guys all fit under the salary cap. So that was going to be my approach. I might adjust because I already have this Talon Horton Tucker look around a little bit, but in general, I'm just trying to play some of these players who are among the top values and then get close to that salary cap of 120 using those plays because then you know you're getting a lineup that projects really well if you're using players who are you know among the top values and you're getting close to that salary cap you're going to have a lineup that projects really well and we're not at the stage yet in Sarer where you really need to be trying to get too contrary and anything like that because most people are not really using projections or you know there's also a number of people uh who are just playing the cards they have. They, they're playing the cards that they've won. They're not really investing much, which totally fair. That's exactly the approach that I'm taking with Rare. But I think if you just make a little bit of investment in these limited cards, you can have a pretty big advantage right away. So that has been my approach, and that is going to uh, continue to be my approach until it stops working. So far, it's worked just quite well just to use these projections using players who project well and then players who are among the top values in the stochastic projections so that is going to be my approach again for this weekend slate uh, hope you can find some success using this or a similar approach as well good luck